So in this part, we're going to explore the plot and characters from page 29 to 33. It will be only about plot and characters. If you want to learn about the difficult vocabulary, please go back to my previous video. So if you remember, I said that in Act 2, is about the inspector questioning Gerald and also Mrs. Sperling. But before the inspector actually questioned Gerald, um, there was such conversation between the inspector and Mrs. Sperling. So this is what this part is about. Um, after the inspector talked to Gerald a little bit, then Mrs. Sperling entered the room. So in the beginning, you can see that Mrs. Sperling is trying to remain her very uh, polite um, upper class manner by smiling uh, at uh, the inspector with a very easy tone, very calm. So you can see that Mrs. Sperling's attitude and her tone showed um, her social status, but also her authority as well. So once she entered, she immediately t told the inspector that uh, they would love to help, but the point is they didn't have much to tell the inspector. So she, he, she was trying to ask um, the inspector to leave as soon as possible. This is what is implied in her speech. So when Sheila tried to react immediately, uh, asking her mother to stop talking like that, then Mrs. Burn was a little bit shocked, actually. Because in the previous part, Mrs. Burn actually didn't witness how the inspector questioned Sheila. So Mrs. Burn actually didn't know what Sheila actually has gone through. And of course, Sheila knew that the inspector knew everything. So Sheila was trying to convince her mother not to uh, be dishonest, okay? and try not to pretend. So in that line, um, Sheila said, I'm afraid you say something or do something that you'll be sorry for afterwards. Why would she say that? Because that was what had happened to her. After the inspector questioned her, she felt really guilty about firing and complaining about Eva Smith. So she was kind of giving advice to her mother not to do something silly. And of course, Mrs. Burling didn't understand. So Sheila tried to explain to her mother saying that everyone started like that. Like Mr. Burling said that it wasn't his fault. And Sheila said that it wasn't her fault in the beginning. So confident, so pleased. But then after the inspector questioned them, they realized their own problems. So that's why Sheila believed that um, Mrs. Burling shouldn't pretend to not knowing anything. And be so proud and too confident. So here comes to Mrs. Burns be saying that the inspector actually had influence to the young ones. So the inspector said that the young ones were more impressionable. They were more easily influenced. So you can start thinking, what is the meaning of this line? Why would J.B. Priestley write this line? What did he mean? What is the major difference between the older ones and younger ones? The older ones, like Mr. Burley and Mrs. Burley, they were capitalists. So they believe in earning money, um, protecting their own benefits. But the young ones, they're more like socialists. So they're about how the society work well together, how... Uh, Everyone should be helping each other in the community. So this is the difference between the older ones and the young ones. So the impression of inspector here could also imply the education that the younger ones received at that time. So at that moment, Mrs. Brown already realized that if Sheila continued to stay there, it wouldn't be good. For the situation so mrs burling immediately talked to sheila saying that oh you look tired dear you should go to bed but do you think that this is really spoken out of care do you think mrs burling really cared that if sheila was tired at that moment i would say no mrs burling tried to say that simply because she wanted sheila to disappear from 
the dining room or the drawing room. Should be the dining room at that moment. However, Sheila didn't really understand the intention of Miss Berling, and so she insisted to stay. So Miss Berling said that oh, that was morbid curiosity. So it's not a good thing that Sheila was so curious about uh, what happened to that uh, to Eva Smith. So Mrs. Berlin continues to explain her stance that um, she didn't understand why Eva Smith would actually commit suicide. She was trying to um, distinguish the difference between Eva Smith class, the lower class, and her her own class, the upper class. So she was trying to show her superiority. And she then knew the problem and immediately corrected Mrs. Burton, asking her not to show off now in front of uh, the inspector. And so Mrs. Burton was so annoyed and she was sort of argued back saying that you shouldn't try to build up a wall between us and the girl. So try not to pretend that we are really from different classes and what happened to Ava Smith um, was nothing related to them. So this is what Sheila was asking Mrs. Burnham not to do. Because she believed that if you build this wall, the inspector would break it down anyway. And she felt that Mrs. Burnham would feel guilty at the end. This is what Sheila believed. But of course Mrs. Burnham didn't agree. Saying that she didn't understand Sheila. But at that time, the inspector immediately replied saying he actually understood Sheila. So Mrs. Burton was shocked. Come on, I'm her mother. If I don't understand her, who would understand her? So Mrs. Burton kind of feel offended by an outsider. An outsider would understand her own daughter. So this is pretty ridiculous to Mrs. Burton. But here, you can immediately tell that the inspector and Sheila, they were actually having or sharing the same perspective point of view both of them thought differently from mrs burning and mr burning so you can tell that sheila and the inspector actually they were the socialist while mr and mrs burning they were the capitalist this is the major reason why they shared a different point of view i mean mrs burning versus the inspector and Mrs. Burton continued to speak and Sheila continued to try to stop her mother um, from making more mistakes. And Sheila was sort of giving advice to her own mother, asking her to stop before it's too late. Uh, and Mrs. Burton thought that Sheila gave her such advice was because um, Sheila didn't want the inspector to get upset. But then the inspector immediately clarified that, well, he wouldn't be upset and because he was just doing his job and then mrs burling tried to express that express that she was the one who was actually upset so mrs burling was trying to vent her anger but both gerald and sheila both thought that mrs burling shouldn't do that now or anymore because the inspector actually had questioned uh, mr burling sheila and both actually confessed that they had done something wrong. So both Gerald and Sheila knew that there would be some problem with Mrs. Berlin as well. So even Gerald would advise Mrs. Berlin to not to talk too much as well. And try not to use her authority or power to threaten the inspector anymore. Because this inspector is definitely not easy. But of course, Mrs. Burton wouldn't listen to both Gerald and Sheila. Number one, they were both young. And number two, Mrs. Burton uh, was actually from the upper class. Of course, he, was, he would be really upset. So she immediately reminded the inspector that her husband, Mr. Burton, was still uh, a magistrate, the judge in the law court, and was the Lord Mayor before to show their power and show the status. But Gerald immediately reminded Mrs. Burnham, saying that, oh, actually, the inspector knew already. Still, the inspector dared to question the family, meaning that the power thing, the social status thing, doesn't bother the inspector anymore. And immediately, Sheila asked her mother to stop again.
and finally Mrs. Berlin stopped a bit, softened a bit, and didn't try to show off his power to threaten the inspector anymore. And they changed the topic to talk about Eric. And Mrs. Berlin found Eric pretty strange that he was a little bit uh, drunk and in silver mood tonight. So the inspector took this chance to question Mrs. Berling and see how much she actually understood about her son. And so the inspector asked her whether Eric was used to drinking. And of course, Mrs. Berling didn't know anything about Eric and thought that he wasn't old enough to build a drinking problem. It was just this occasion that the whole family was so happy and so he drank a little bit more. But in, the inspector said, well, some young men would drink too far, like far too much. And Sheila immediately replied, saying that Eric was actually a heavy drinker. And Mrs. Burns didn't believe in Sheila. And uh, Sheila continued to explain, asking her mother not to pretend that she didn't know. And uh, saying that to confirm that Eric actually drink, uh, used to drink a lot. Mrs. Burns didn't believe in Sheila and asked Gerald. So basically from this conversation, you already could tell that Mrs. Burns actually didn't care a lot about Eric or didn't know much about Eric. So she was just a mother who spoiled her son without really showing real care to her son. So even Gerald knew that Eric was a heavy drinker because well the town is was actually pretty small and everyone knew about everyone so when eric tried to show her around in the town she would definitely know and um mrs burn was so upset because that was the time uh when the outsider the inspector asked her about her son and she didn't know anything about her son so she was pretty upset so that's when she reconfirmed her mother that she would regret if she didn't tell the truth because the inspector would definitely break down all the walls and to try to reveal all the lies that they told. But with this conversation, you just need to remember that Mrs. Burn was the kind of mother who actually didn't really care about her own children. So power, money, social status meant more than her own family. Probably the time that she spent outside with other upper class ladies would be more than with their, her own children. Okay, back to the conversation. Mrs. Berlin was sort of annoyed, so asked, um, she asked Sheila to stop and saying that it wasn't the inspector, it was just Sheila being silly and said about all these things. And Sheila dis disagreed. She just said um, only because the inspector hasn't questioned her Mrs. Burning yet. But at that moment, Mrs. Burn was still very confident, saying that even if the inspector would question her, she would have no problem and, and nothing to hide but to add, tell the inspector the truth because she believed that she had done nothing wrong. And she was still very confident that she didn't know much about this girl, Eva Smith. So Mrs. Burn thought that she wasn't involved in this case yet. But you can see, well, the inspector, of course, knew what Mrs. Burling had done. It's just that he didn't uh, review it here yet because he was trying to question Gerald instead of Mrs. Burling. If you still remember how the inspector liked to question one person at a time. And then at that moment, Mr. Burling entered the room and saying that Eric was uh, not convinced to go to bed. Saying because the inspector asked Eric to stay awake, and which if the inspector really did and Mr. Burn wasn't happy about this arrangement so uh, he, he thought that if the inspector would like to talk to Eric he should talk to Eric now because he was drunk already remember he had too much drink from Berlin already and so Mr. Burn asked the, ins the inspector to question Eric immediately so that Eric could go to bed afterwards because he thought that Eric uh, was still so young so he wouldn't commit any serious serious crime anyway it must be something very simple like what Sheila has done like simply complaining about Eva Smith or something like that but the inspector refused to do that of course if you finish 
reading the book, then you should know that Eric actually committed something big, like a really big crime. So, uh, we will we'll see in the next videos. All right, so let's come back. And、uh, the inspector said Eric needed to wait because he was about to question Gerald. And and Mr. Brown wasn't happy about the inspector's arrangement, and he was giving the inspector the last warning, saying that okay, uh, your tone, your attitude was really bad. Um, if you're still um being like this, then I wouldn't give you any opportunity, any chance anymore to question. And Mr. Brown was trying to take some action, but the inspector replied immediately, saying that you don't. Need to give me any opportunity because I'm just doing my job. So you can see that from this conversation, the inspector definitely has more power, authority than Mr. Brown. Even、um, Mr. Brown should have a higher social class. But in terms of this, the job, the inspector actually has a really high authority and power. So I want you to think about this. You can also question what. Makes the inspector so powerful and has such authority. Think about it. And then Sheila added her own comment, saying that, "Oh, he's giving us the rope, so we'll hang ourselves." So this one giving us the rope is not the same meaning、uh, to the phrase that Mr. Berling used because Mr. Berling said, "Give you much more rope means giving you more opportunity and chance. It's your last chance." But what Sheila here. Means was literally a rope that you can hang yourself. Okay, so this is like playing with the words, and Sheila was pretty negative, saying that well, they they will only have a dead end after this、uh, investigation because all of them should have problem. And so, as Mister Brown just entered the room, so he didn't realize the problem that Sheila had, and he asked Missus Brown, and Missus Brown thought that, oh, this girl would was just a little bit overexcited. And then Missus Brown turned to the inspector and asked him now what he wanted to know. So that's the end of this part, page um twenty nine to thirty three. Because starting from the next part, the inspector would officially kick off the investigation with Gerald, and then you will know the relationship between Gerald and Eva Smith. So that's the end of this part, and thank you for watching.